Hey fam, it's me Aaron for a comic show. This is New Comics Now. I got big stacks of some great stuff. It's really an exciting week of comics this week. Seriously, I know there's new stuff every week, but there's not always like forever evil. This is the end of that with uh, Justice League and Original Sin, uh, another Spider-Man by uh, Slot and Saga. Saga, it's been a long time. And uh, let me just dive into this because literally, um, I haven't been more excited in a long time reading these comics. These two books, need to be read in tandem. The uh, Forever Evil 7 and Just League 30. Forever Evil 7 first, then Just League 30. Jeff Johns, I freaking love you. Like you are, like, you just remind me of how much you're awesome. Like this Forever Evil, I'm not going to spoil stuff. This is gonna be spoiler free, but there are several points where there's excited utterance that I just like, oh shit, and just laughing so loud and hysterically and you know, the the, other people that work here on Tuesday morning are pulling the books and doing the work while I'm just reading stuff like uh, in just comic ecstasy. This, this was so fun how all this came to fruition with Alexander Luther and Lex Luther and how Lex saved the day, which has been in everything. You know, that you've seen that in even the, all the Superman teasers for Jeff John Superman that Lex saves the world. This is cool. This Lex is Walter White of the DC Universe, no doubt. And that he has this uh, dynamic now. I don't know if he's envious of Batman now because, okay, so he's always been envious of Superman. He's always wanted Superman to be kind of dethroned in the public consciousness as like, you know, the savior of the world, that he's this alien menace. And now he realizes that there are menaces bigger than these powered people, and he's not jealous of the people with powers because powers are their weakness. Well, who doesn't have powers? Batman. And uh, Batman has Dick, and all the Dick stuff is resolved in this issue. Um, I'm sure you know about the Grayson stuff, but Lex sees the Dick Bruce stuff and that he has no powers and blah, 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 and this and that, and my very most favorite superhero that um, Jeff Johns took away. Jeff Johns has given back and uh, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, man, so Lex gets his own dick and it's, it's in there. So you'll see, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I want to talk about it so badly. Uh, it, it's awesome, it's great stuff. Just League of America by uh, Matt Kent. This is like an end cap to the whole series. This is also after Forever Evil. And it kind of shows why that team went away and uh, why some of them are forming the Justice League uh, United over there with, uh, with Jeff Lemire and that it's like a family. And um, Marsh Mander is kind of like a surrogate father to Stargirl and it was quite touching and I really like that aspect because the Teen Titans were always a family back in the day and now if Justice League United is that family feel, awesome. And Jeff Lemire does family better than almost anyone working in mainstream comics now. So I'm excited for that book. Uh, Futures In, you got a uh, fair play on the cover with Mr. Terrific. This was a, a pretty cool issue. I'm really digging this uh, five year jump into the future. All these future jumps are just kind of cool. You know, like let's, let's get this jump started. Let's get this going. Let's see where it all leads. And then let's see where the current stuff is leading towards that. And there's a character in the end of this issue that um, is a fan favorite that has not been getting much respect in the New 52 presently and in the future, yes, this is cool. And that's kind of what Futures In is looking like. Is there's a lot of these characters that haven't really gotten their fair play in the current continuity. All their books canceled early on or been bad or bad reviewed or not my cup of tea. And now these characters can have a new life five years in the future and this with no holds barred, just crazy stuff, anything can happen. Uh, Batman Eternal 7, Penguin is the lesser of two evils, and um, I am digging Snyder's helmed book here, Weekly Batman Goodness, um, great stuff. Uh, Harley Quinn, this is the end of that little story arc with the, the crazy old man, and <laughs> I'm so excited for the, the Harley in the future book in September. I just What Palmiani and Connor have planned with Harley uh, and Joker, that just sounds so awesome to me, but book's a runaway success. Batman Superman by Greg Pak. This is that doomed, uh, infected, and I've liked it way better than I thought I would. We had three parts last week, and I'm not a fan of Doomsday, so 
having Doomsday just be like the plot device he always was, but not the whole story, not just this whole story of him just punching and punching and punching and then falling down and dying. Let's have that all happen in front loaded and then go into some really awesome stuff with Superman. So I'm enjoying that. Greg Pak's awesome. Charles Soule was great. It's good stuff. Um, Sinestro 2 is out. Colin Bunn of Six Gun and uh, all those uh, Deadpool mini bus minis. Uh, his Sinestro is great. And Sinestro in Forever Evil was awesome. Sinestro and Black Adam. You know, I never really thought of the dynamic they would have together, how similar they are as characters. That, you know, one has a country, one had a planet, you know, but very similar, very any means necessary to protect their people, and their people were worse for the wear. Um, but I'm liking these Sinestro Core, this Yellow Lanterns book. I'm really enjoying it. It's fun. And finally, for DC, this is an insanely good DC week, but Black Canary and Zatanna, Bloodspell is out. This is an original hardcover with uh, Paul Dini and Joe Quinones. You probably know Joe Quinones from his um, Wednesday Comics gig with Green Lantern. That, um, that was an Eisner win there. But um, Paul Dini, you know, from Batman Animated Series and all kinds of crazy stuff. But um, this book was years in the making. Like, what, nine years? I don't know. Like, it was first pitched in 2005 and then uh, approved in 2010 and now it's here and what's really cool about it other than that it's DC women kicking ass and fighting female villains and all kinds of crazy guest stars and all kinds of awesome different old 52 costumes is it's in the old 52 continuity they're not screaming it anywhere they're not like saying like hey guys this is the old 52 continuity if you want something with that this is this but it is so get it and enjoy it moving on to Marvel not much I'm talking about with Marvel this week. DC had all the glory, but um, Original Sin, Who Holds the Eye. Uh, I am digging this mystery with who could have done this to the Watcher. What Now they know everything, and what are they going to do with that knowledge? And uh, the, the weird little team-ups, like Punisher and Doctor Strange teaming up together. I'm, I'm digging it. You guys know I love Jason Aaron, and uh, I, like, I like a crossover with some... Uh, big questions. I love the big question mystery stuff. You throw all the characters together and it's not about how powerful they are, it's how smart they are and, and how they, they work together. So I'm, I'm digging it. So uh, check it out. If you like the first issue, second issue had a lot more stuff going on. Amazing Spider-Man 2, Dan Slott, Ramos, love it. It's uh, Heavy Electro, it's uh, Peter Parker putting his life back together after Otto with the Avengers. There's a important scene in Cap with Captain America. There's uh, stuff with, you know, his sort of fiance or Otto's sort of fiance. A lot of great stuff. And the new purpose of Parker Industries, the new purpose of what he's doing with this life he was handed from Otto that's going to be his own. And um, neat that all this is just the second issue. Really enjoying that. This uh, Deadpool annual is Spider-Man and Deadpool. It's so awesome when they team up. Deadpool thinks they're amazing friends. It's it's a chameleon story, and there is a plot chameleon purpose for them to change costumes and pretend they're each other. And uh, what we get is a lot of awesome, fun action, and at the end, a brilliant punchline to um, what the Daily Bugle has to say about the whole thing. So that's a fun, one-and-done, Deadpool annual one-shot with Spider-Man that I enjoyed. And finally, Magneto. This is the book that I'm really digging. Um, it's also Colin Bunn, who does... Sinestro does villains well, villains that are kind of anti-hero villains, and he is the Walter White of Marvel, where uh, Lex Luthor is that for DC. And it's nice to see Magneto being able to just cut loose on the most despicable anti-mutant bigots. Like, that's what, that's what I want to see him doing, and that's what we got to see him do. Uh, moving on to Saga, number 19. This is my favorite book of all the books that are books. I love it the most, and it, I... I'm fine with it taking so long to come out between volumes because they keep the same creative team. There's no filler. And I sell so many of the collections and it gives us a chance to really get more and more new readers ready to go. And uh, this issue did not disappoint. Um, yes, she's wearing some type of um, image comic superhero get up on, on the uh, cover there. And she has a job and uh, he does not have a job. and uh, the. The daughter's a little bit older. Uh, this is not a plot point spoiler that there's a time jump in here. Like, um, 
I suppose Walking Dead was. This is just in the description. There's a little bit of time jump as they are want to do when there's a young baby. They, things always jump ahead a little, so the baby's a little bit uh, older and not just, you know, laying there cooing and, and just pooping diapers. Um, I really liked it. I like, and the fact that the narrative device that, that the baby is narrating it as an adult or as some kind of grown up. And what she ends this issue with is just this like, just like, what the hell? Um, it's very emotional and it's, if you've been in a relationship that has had uh, problems and issues and power dynamics and power shifts, which we all have, um, this issue will resonate with you. It's a great issue. And I love how Vaughn, oh, and it also starts just like issue one, except with, um, with uh, TV head robots giving birth. So it was a great new start. It's a great fresh kind of jump on point. But I mean, if you're gonna jump on, just get the three trades. I mean, seriously, what the hell? Do you hate yourself? Try this book, it's awesome. Um, Invincible, this is the first in a bold new startling arrow, new blah, 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 blah. It does not jump ahead in time. In fact, it starts exactly where it left off with our hero with his pants down, you know, his pants around his ankles. and. A little Superman uh, Smallville nod on the first page, and it goes on to some of the craziest, goriest, most ridiculous, um, oh my God moments that the betrayal, the deception, the, the gore, the stuff that we got with um, his father at the end of volume two, we're getting here with um, Robot, and it's insane, and no one is safe, and it's just, if you fell off Invincible, Pick it up, try it. You'll see what you were missing in your life and probably want to continue it and probably go back and get some of the collections you might have missed because it was, it's awesome and Kirkman is doing a great job there. East to West, issue 12, lots of crazy development. Um, book, in my opinion, I love it, but it reads better in collection, but I, I have to read it issue issue because I just, I, I love it. And finally, MPH, this is Mark Miller's new book with uh, Duncan who did, uh, all kinds of stuff I loved. Of course he did all the clerk stuff, but um, he's just done so much, so much for Vertigo and so much for just the weirdness that I am fond of, that his name and his artwork's attached to it. But Mark Miller, essentially it's just, what if speed, the drug, actually gave you speed? Like actually gave you super speed? And what would that be like? And who hasn't messed around with methamphetamines? And you know, you could say MPH, methamphetamines, like seriously, like, you know, you get jittery and it's, it's just, you feel like the world slowed down except for you and it's awesome. And to, to do that with the lens of flash-like superpowers is cool. And to see what that would do, what a drug that did that would do to society when as a society, we're all sped up. We're all having to get so much more done in so much less time and everything is always on. We're always at everyone's beck and call with emails and text messages and tweets and Facebook craziness. And there's no, it's like this endless now and it's never not now. And it's just this short forever that we're all stuck in. And wouldn't it be cool if we could just take one pill and everything would be slowed down and we could finally be effective people. And that's what it is. So enjoy it. Thanks guys, bye-bye. Thanks for watching, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. And if you're local or in town this week, we have something every single day in the comic shops, Geek Easy. Tuesday is uh, Geek Trivia, where if your team wins, you get your bar tab comped. Wednesday is Open Mic with Mark with a C. Thursday is Comics and Comics, which is stand-up comics in a comic shop. Friday is Nerdy Karaoke. Saturday is the um, final free comic book May Saturday before the big party uh, on the 31st. So come in, get free beer between uh, 12 and 7. You need a free beer. And then uh, Sunday is Game of Thrones. So come party with us. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.